Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and in this episode, we are going to continue buttoning up the oil system for the Alferrari. All right, those of you watching last week will have seen that I had to race off before I could finish fitting up my new bigger PWR oil cooler that I got to fit in the front here. Uh, I got to make up my brackets and I cut off the old ones. So now it's time to just quickly mount these back up again, get this into place, and then I've got a feeling I'm gonna to have to do a bit more modification to get this to actually fit where I want it. Thankfully, I was smart enough to do some fitting of this oil cooler with the fittings on, and the fittings actually extended up quite a fair way. And it, uh, to get it to sit where I need to, the base will be there, and the fittings are actually touching this radiator support mount. Now, it's not the end of the world, but I am gonna have to cut out clearance and make a new panel to fit the, uh, the hose fittings so that I can get the, uh, the oil flow exactly where I need it. So a uh, little bit of uh, CAD templating and um, some time on the guillotine and the bender. Jeez, that guillotine saves me some time. Uh, <laughs> and I've got my replacement uh, patch panel. So this will give me a nice extra bulge here to cover over the uh, fittings for the oil cooler. So that's gonna go on here. I'm just gonna mark it out now, cut it, weld it, and uh, we should be good. That is all welded up. Um, the, uh, the, the welds down here are not the prettiest, but I can bodywork them at the end. Um, it's sort of very difficult to get a, a torch into that little gap, but we have our clearance now that doesn't look like trash, that uh, actually makes space for the lines of the oil cooler. So now we need to continue to fit the oil cooler properly. Okay, so the PWR oil cooler is now mounted uh, and uh, has some hoses. I need to get some bolts uh, to mount it up uh, above here. I need some longer bolts that we'll, I can work on uh, later. I'll get them in. The next thing I want to tackle is go back to my dry sump oil tank. And a lot of you are asking about pressure testing it, and that's what I'm going to do. But before I do that, I have to make the gasket to go in the top to between this uh, this bolt on top section and uh, the top of the tank. So let's start making a gasket.
All right, so um, I have my gasket I made up for the top, and now I've gone through, I, uh, I've got a bunch of these Raceworks AN plugs. I've put on everything all around the place, and I actually made up my uh, Dash 20 hose. Uh, it's too long at the moment. I just put a straight fitting on the end, and it has, uh, I've got a cap on the end of the hose as well. Um, I couldn't get a cap that would go straight onto the tank, so I've done it this way through the hose. And for this far end, um, I actually went and got myself like a, uh, this is a radiator pressure tester kit. So uh, I'll put a link to something like this in the description, but basically uh, you can connect it and pump it up with air. Because it's such a big area, and this is just a little pump, it's gonna take ages. So I'm gonna use my air compressor. I've used one of those fittings in the, uh, the fill part of the tank. So I can put some pressure in there, and then I can go around and um, I can spray all of the joins, all of my, um, my welds, and see if it makes a bubble, makes some bubbles, I know I've got leaks. No bubbles, no leaks. That's the theory, so uh, let's test it out. Well, that worked really well, actually. Um, I have lots of leaks around my rubber seal and around my bolt holes up the top here, which I kind of expected at this stage. Um, I'm gonna have to make a better gasket. This, uh, this rubber material I have is too old. It's not very good, so I'm gonna get a better gasket. That's easy. Um, but there's a, uh, there's a leak here. The only leak in my welding is right here on this uh, little lumpy join here. So uh, that's an easy fix. So uh, TIG welder out. Let's uh, fix that up, and then I know at least my tank is nice and sealed. Okay, so just before I move on, I just wanted to mention um, a bunch of you in the comments saw that I was struggling with a, um, a, a big 36 mm uh, nut on the 911 that I couldn't get anything in there. I've got massive 36 mm sockets. Um, this is the biggest um, shifter that I have and it does fit it. Uh, it. It's big enough, it goes up to that, but it doesn't go up to big enough for these um, uh, massive AN20 fittings. And uh, a bunch of you suggested to get myself a set of these. Now these are um, adjustable um, Nipex adjustable uh, spanners that work a bit like a, uh, a set of multi-grips, but the, uh, the jaws come in parallel to each other. They clamp straight, which is a fantastic idea. So actually it's big enough for this uh, they're a great, uh, great tool. I will uh, put a link to these as well in the description, but I just wanted to say thank you for putting me onto these. I've never seen them before, and they are, they are fantastic. They're not too big either. I looked to get a 36 um, a mil spanner for the, uh, that nut on my 911, and the spanner is, is like, like it's, it's the length of my arm, and it's, it's huge. There's just no way it was gonna fit in there. This is a fantastic uh, bit of gear. Anyway, um, moving on back onto the, uh, the, the tank. Now that I've actually got the extra thickness of having this rubber in here, I'll probably have a thinner piece of rubber, to be honest, when I actually get to it. But uh, the, the bolts no longer, uh, the bolts are now sort of interfering with the, the body of the car. Um, and I am going to actually swap them over. I, it was always the plan. I just uh, the, I had these uh, um, normal normal bolts to start with. I'm going to change them over to these uh, countersunk Allen head bolts. So uh, I'm just going to run through with the countersink bit now on all these holes and put in some countersunk heads. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is to actually take this adapter and make my hose to go across underneath, underneath this rail and get across to where my dry sump tank is back up under here. Now, the current situation is that this rail, um, the sandblaster actually picked it out and uh, drew it out some spot welds and sandblasted in there to get rid of some of the surface rust. Now, I'm gonna be reinforcing this rail 
at a later date when I've got it off of the uh, hoist and back on the rotisserie. Um, but I need to trim out some of the lower part of this rail that has this, uh, this sort of double lip in it. I need to trim that lip out so that I can actually run my hose through under there. So let's start trimming. That is the uh, the basic run for the hose. I might actually clearance out this rail a little bit more and uh, as I said, this is all gonna get reinforced. I may actually make a, um, um, a brace around it. I've got some bracing to go on this, uh, this whole area. So it's all gonna be reinforced. Um, but for now, that is, uh, that is gonna do the job. So it's time to look at moving further up and doing the hoses up higher. All right, so now I'm gonna make up the breathers for the top of the tank. I'm using um, the Raceworks push lock hose. This stuff has got to be the easiest thing to, uh, to put together there is. It's um, basically, <laughs> you just push it on and these barbs hold it there. Um, quick square to WD-40 and off. No tools even needed, it's that easy. And that is never coming off. That is, that is on there rock solid. So uh, that's uh, one end down. All right, so we have our breathers going from the top of the tank in through the bulkhead connectors. And then they come in from behind the dash, go in behind all the steering and come out and go into the engine bay in there. So, so I know there are a couple of people who were concerned last week that those lines were going through under the dash. You need to remember they're just breathers. Uh, they're just gonna be having uh, vacuum and vapor. They're not, uh, I'm not, concerned about them going through there. I would not want hot oil lines going through the uh, behind the dash of the car, but uh, that I'm happy with. But that is all the time I have today. So uh, I think that means it's time for fun facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, by 1993, Alfa Romeo's Spider was quite long in the tooth, having been in continuous production since 1966. The replacement was designed by Pinafarina in the form of the Alfa Romeo GTV and the new Alfa Romeo Spider. It was praised at the time by Jeremy Clarkson as one of the best sports cars available and the critics were really impressed that the Italians had stepped up the build quality to almost rival the Germans. Both versions shared the same front end with a rounded tail on the Spider and a cam back on the GTV. There were quite a few limited editions but most notable was the GTV Cup. Alfa Romeo offered a one-make race series for non-professional drivers. 160 drivers signed up and 16 at a time were instructed by an ex-Formula 1 driver. They were then sent to battle it out against each other on the track. 419 special edition GTV cups were built, either in silver with a 2 litre twin spark 150 horsepower engine or in red with a 3 litre V6 making 220 horsepower. By the end of its run in 2004, about 80,000 GTVs and Spiders had been built. All right, we're getting there, slowly chipping away at it. Uh, now I have the uh, front oil cooler mostly mounted up and that, uh, and that panel in there and um, working out a lot of the way that uh, some of these hoses are going to travel. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a challenge, but uh, as always, getting everything fitting in there is half the, half the fun. You are a man who enjoys a challenge. I am, hence putting this stupid engine in this little car. Oh yeah. <laughs> please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you'd like to follow us a day earlier, please join us on Patreon. And, um... and we'll see you next week. All right, guys. See you later. Okay. Both, both versions, <laughs> both versions shared. Blech.
and a cam back on the GTV. Oh, professional series for non-professional drivers. <laughs> <laughs> Don't need to do it again. Yes. <laughs> yes. Don't interrupt my process. <laughs> silver ones with a twin liter. Either in silver with a twin liter. Yes. Thank God for that.